and uh, you know, Yanni will tell us about an exciting line of work which connects crypto and meta complexity. Uh, so this is really a perfect fit for this workshop and the program. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Thanks, um, Yanni. Thank you Eva, for introducing me and uh, uh, hi everybody. Uh, I'm very excited to be here uh, to talk about say uh, like uh, basically to give like a simple tutorial on like cryptography and like a Komogo capacity or like meta capacity. And uh, this is based on joint work with uh, Rafael Paz, who's over there, my amazing advisor. So um, this talk is going to be divided <laughs> into two parts. And uh, so in part one, uh, I'm going to, as mentioned, a tutorial on like meta capacity and cryptography. And uh, in part two, I will we'll talk about like, a, we'll take like a win-win perspective and to look at like the results we get like a, in part one. And this surprisingly, like we get like some results like a, from this view and uh, <laughs> yeah, well, like uh, it's like after this is like after something new, like after three years, like or like so. Yeah, to me, it's like a uh, really surprising. And uh, okay, so if uh, so, there would be like something new for like uh, in the part two for those who like have uh, been like uh, to my talk like before. So. Uh, let me start with like a, a tutorial. So um, today uh, we're going to focus on like the notion of one way functions, which is like the genius notion proposed by Diffian Hammer in 76. And I guess like uh, we all know, it's like a really basic notion uh, for cryptography. So what is one, a one way function? Uh, well, I guess we all know it's like something easy to compute, but it's like, hard to invert. So um, let me also recall like the formal definition for a bit. So for any function f, we say that it's like one way if for any PPT attacker a, well, like given me like a random input x, like of length n, and I let like y equal f of x. And I ask like the probability that the attacker a on input like the string y finds like a pre-image of f of x is at most a negligible amount. And I want to highlight here that, well, like this distribution over y is actually defined by this one function f. And as we all know, like one function is really like a very, very important notion in cryptography. And it's like both necessary and sufficient basically for the whole world of private key crypto, well, including like a private key encryption like PRG, PRF, we have like signature. If, if we have one function, then we can build like authentication scheme, like coin tossing scheme, commitment schemes, well, basically like a really beautiful world here. So whether one function exists is really the most, like unequivocally, the most important problem in cryptography. And as we can see, well, like if we have one function, we can build like, this whole like a beautiful world, but uh, as we shall see like very soon, um, when it comes to, well, like whether one function exists, like we really like know like a uh, very few about this. And uh, well, to, I have to be honest, like so uh, notable like crypto schemes, including like PKE or like obvious transfer and obfuscation, uh, they're not included in this list. But well, the point here is like to do crypto, even with those like powerful primitives, you still need like one function. So the question here is like whether one function exists. Okay, what do we know? And well, like a simple observation tells us if we are able to prove like a one function exists unconditionally, this would give us like a proof of MP is not equal to P. Well, so like, Proving it unconditionally exists seems to be like too much to hope for. So, like also in the seminar paper by Ziff and Helmer, they propose like the holy grail of cryptography is basically to show like the converse is true or to prove that we can base one function on the assumption that MP is not equal to P. 
And again, unfortunately, this is like still a very, very hard, like a very, very challenging like problem. And uh, we have like many results of this, but uh, unfortunately, like most, almost all of them are like most of them are just like a negative result for like a black ball separation. So in the absence of the holy grail, well, we need cryptography to protect our privacy over the internet. So we really need like wire functions. So what do we do? Like people have discovered well those amazing computational problems whose hardness will like enable us to uh, get cryptography. So we have like fact the factory problem, the discrete logarithm problem, and more recently uh, lattice problems. And uh, in practice, we also have like heuristic constructions such as DS, char, AES. So great. And uh, so far, like those are not broken. But the question here is like, for how long? Like how long do they last? As Mikali said, like in 88, well, like cryptographers seldom sleep well. Okay, why? Because we know like, if we have like quantum computers, then we know, well, factoring and the discrete logarithm problem are actually easy and can be solved by like a quantum computer in polynomial time. So like the central question, like for the part one of this talk is that does there exist, well, like a, some like very natural average case hard problem, like whose like hardness characterizes the existence of wire functions. So if we get like such a problem, then kind of great, we, if we want to like deduce wire function, we can just focus our attention, like basically on the hardness of this problem. And this is going to be without loss of generality. And uh, so in a recent with, uh, results with uh, uh, Rafael, uh, we provide like a affirmative answer to uh, this question. And we uh, gave like a characterization of my functions. Uh, so basically we show that for like any polynomial T, a uh, wire functions exist if and only if this like T time bounded cohomological capacity is mildly hard on average. So as we shall see like very soon, this like T time bounded cohomological capacity is really like a classical notion and has been studied since the sixties. And also like the mildly like average case harness we need here is also like standard harness notion for average case harness in the literature. Okay, so, well, let us introduce the notion of cohomological capacity. Yeah, like, uh, it's like very excited to introduce like meta capacity again in this workshop, like, uh, um, great. So, like, in, so, um, the question here is like, we have the following two string. Uh, the first string is like one, two, three, something. And uh, the second string is like one, seven, three, blah, blah, blah. And the question is like, which of the two strings is more random? And if you look at those two strings, like the answer seems to be like obvious. Well, like apparently one, two, three is not, but like the second one, like, I don't know what it is. It should be random. But when you think about it, it's like a bit tricky to argue like why the second one is like more random. Cause if you look at uniform distribution, they have equal probability mass. Okay, so as suggested by Komogo, we like instead we should look at well the length of the shortest program that generates this string x, and let's denote this like uh, value by k of x, and it this notion turns out to be well like amazing notion, capture like to measure how much randomness like an individual string has, and uh, uh, I also have like a picture here and. Uh, uh, as we can see, it's like a pretty beautiful and I love it. And like arguably it's like a beautifulness comes from like it, the fact that it has like small convolute capacity. Wow. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice picture. Yeah. And uh, as you can see, if I put a random picture here, like it's going to be like some noise here. It's not going to be beautiful. <laughs> I think the point here is also that picture looks super complicated, but yeah, like very small description, right? And yes, it's also like a, like a, a program generally. So like yeah, like how like 
like how short this program can be if we want to generate like this picture. But we know this must be a way, but it's not clear, right? Because mm. okay, yeah. so I we can formally fix like a, a universal tree machine U, and uh, we are looking for like the length of the shortest program pi, uh, which consists of first like a description of a tree machine and second. Um, the contents on the input tape W, um, such that when being simulated on the universal Turing machine, like this program M on input W should like output the string X. And uh, I want to remark here that while well, like the most like uh, the most common complaints like about core capacity is well basically this universal Turing machine U like. Or you can ask, well, can we find like another universal true machine that like makes the description shorter? And in this talk, this doesn't really matter. Like any of your favorite true machine kind of fit here, and it's it's easier to just like think of like Python here. So here, like any programs in this talk are just Python programs, and uh, everything will like uh, work pretty fine. Um, <laughs> and okay, so we know like the notion of more capacity, well, has a lot of amazing applications. Well, you can really prove like a like a lot of theorem using this notion. Like for example, like Golgo's incomplete theorem. Like in, in addition, you can also prove like density of primes. And there are like uh, more theorems you can prove, but like unfortunately, this notion is like uh, uncomputable, and uncomputable notions are typically not very interesting. So we need to do something to make it computable. So we instead look at like the time bounded variants of a Komogo capacity. So instead of looking at like all programs, well, we just restrict our attention. To like those programs that runs within like a certain running time bound. So, given me like a running time bound t, I can define well basically the same thing, but within time t of length of x. And as we can see, like if we have like a running time bound, then this notion becomes like computable. And the question here is whether like k t superscript t can be efficiently computed. <laughs> when t is like a polynomial. So, well, this, as mentioned, this is really like a, a classical question and uh, has been studied in the Soviet Union since the 60s and also like by uh, more modernly by Hadmani, Sipser and Co in the 80s. And as we can see, it's like closely related to like the minimal, so-called like a minimal circuit size problem. So here, Basically, if you like take a different computational model, so here we are looking at like, Turing machines, and if you if you love circuits, then there's like a, a minimal circuits uh, capacity variant, and so I want to mention here that like this uh, like this question of uh, whether KT can be efficiently computed is like actually a meta capacity problem. So why this is a meta capacity? Basically, KT asks for like a, a capacity of a fixed string. And we are asking, can this like a KT be efficiently computed? This is like a capacity of a capacity of, of the string. So uh, this will refer to uh, meta capacity. This is where like the name uh, comes from. Okay. And uh, now let me introduce like a, the notion of a average case hardness uh, that we rely on. Somewhat intriguingly, even like in the 60s, they have like this notion has been studied and they call it like a frequential version. So the question here is basically does there exist an algorithm that computes like KT of X basically for a large fraction of X's? And well, like a simple observation here is like this KT. Well, seems to be like I mentioned, pretty like hard to compute, but it can be actually like approximated within an additive factor of log n, with like a pretty decent probability, one minus one over n. And well, the algorithm here is like really simple. 
which is outputs like n, where n is well the length of my input string. Okay, let's like stop a little bit and see like why they say outputting n heuristic like, works pretty well. So let's look at those strings on which like my outputting n heuristic fails, and because it fails, then I know uh, it has well it couldn't have like more complexity larger than n minus n plus log n because well like for any for any string like think about like the python program like like print together with like this string so basically you you just need to pay like the length of like a command print to print the string so the comorbid complexity is going to be something like n plus of one at most now so if this a uh, my simple heuristic fails then it has to fall on like those strings with comorbid complexity smaller than n minus log n and we know there are only two to the well, like minus and minus log n such many programs, and therefore, like my simple heuristic will only fail on such on the output of such programs, and therefore I will succeed with like pretty decent probability. So, but notably that uh, note that here the simple heuristic will only succeed. <laughs> on, on, on uniform on uniform distribution right because uh, so now we can ask uh, like a more general version so if i have like instead of uniform i have like a efficient sample of distribution d then does there exist an algorithm like computes kt of x over like x sampled from this distribution and by efficient computable distribution well it's just like can be sampled by probably the true machine and uh, basically like those in cryptography, like any key gen will define like a efficient computable distribution. Um, uh, so let me uh, give like the definition of a, a average case harness we need here. So we said that KT is like mildly hard on average with respect to some distribution D. Well, if there exists like a polynomial P such that no PP heuristic, PPT heuristic can compute like KT with probability, well, one minus one over P of N over like random string sampled from D for infinity many N. Or like alternatively, like every attacker will fail on like a, a small fraction one or poly fraction. So this is like the a hardness assumption we need. And uh, so uh, please like uh, ask questions, like feel free to stop me to ask when you have a question. So um, as it gets to our like main theorem in LP20, so we showed that, well, the following are equivalent. Um, first, when functions exist. And second, if there exists some polynomial t such that kt is mildly hot on average over uniform distribution. Well, if you look at it, it's like really a pretty nice uh, hardness assumption. So kt is natural notion, mildly hard on average, like standard notion of average case hardness and uniform distribution is like arguably the most nature distribution. About exact computation or approximation? Uh, here is exact computation. And uh -huh. well, I will mention like approximation very soon. Okay, because of the approximation was easy. So, uh, so one over n. Yeah, one well, over n is like not good enough. No, but this is one, this is only the uniform distribution. Yeah, but. No, 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 I know, but. Uh, Originally, he said for uniform you'll, you'll distribution. Get there. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would get, get here. Okay. So, well, first of all, this gives well really what we want, like a nature problem characterizing the feasibility of like basic task in cryptography. Like, uh, if this problem is hard, then we have like PRG, PRF commitments. I like all those tasks. It's like great. It's like what we were looking for, and uh, so let me get get to like this uh, approximation uh, version. So. Actually, like our proof, like uh, showed like an independent result for with respect to KT complexity. So remember, like the mild hard on average like definition I gave, it really says like uh, if you want to say break this hardness, you need to like find like a uh, like very roughly speaking a attacker that succeeds with like one minus negligible probability. So yeah, if like even if it's hard like a uh, of with probability, it's like easy with probability like one minus one of n. This is like not enough to deduce that this is like a not average case hard. 
So yeah, it's still like a meaningful question, like asking whether KT is like log n, like it's hard to approximate within like off log n factor. So in fact, like going through our proof of this theorem, like we obtained like something, it's like a statement of KT complexity without crypto, but using like ID, like using or like by going through like uh, those crypto objects. So we show that, well, if KT is like marginally hard on, hard on average to compute exactly. If you assume so, then you also get like hardness with, with respect to approximation. So we also get like KT is like mildly hard on average to all, all of log and approximate. And they, of course, like a, a, the second kind of trivial imply like the first statement. So this is like a very like a intriguing to me because uh, this is like a, <laughs> statement with no crypto but we only know how to prove this like by going through like crypto and then going back so like like arguably there's like something like uh, there this is for the uniform distribution or... yeah this is for the uniform so, distribution can you go back to the definition of mildly yes. hard average so it is it's like exists if it's like mild, mildly hard is if it's like mildly hard if exists like some polynomial such that nobody succeeds with probability better than one minus one over p. So, or like in other words, like to break this, uh, you really need like a algorithm that succeeds with like one minus negligible probability. Yeah, this is exactly, com yeah, compute it exactly. And or of course, it also makes sense if you define like an approximation version, like. Uh, yes, good question. And I guess I will get to that like uh, very soon too. Okay, so. Uh, let me hear remarks uh, mention some like uh, early connections between Y functions and meta complexity. And we are definitely not uh, the first one who kind of uh, discovered this uh, connection. So uh, this dates back to like uh, Rosberg Rutledge and their uh, nature proof. So they observed that uh, if a Y function exists, then basically meta complexity or like KT complexity should be worst case hard. And well, the idea is basically you can, you should be, be able to break like a PRG using like a worst case algorithm for KT. And the converse direction, however, like if KT is hard, then do we get one function? This is like not known. And also this observation is also like kind of not uh, enough for us because uh, we're going to show like one functions implies KT is like mildly hard on average. And uh, this is going to be a lot harder to do. And they also like a very recent result by Rahu Santarnan. Like he showed that like under like a new conjecture, MCSP is like errorlessly higher than average if and only if one function exists. And as mentioned, this MCSP minimal circuit size problem is like really close to closely connected with two KT. But in contrast, our result gives like an unconditional characterization. It's something like uh, if you auxiliary, like if auxiliary inputs y function exists, then y function exists. It's like a, uh, seems like we, are, we seems to be very far from proving this conjecture. But if y function exists, it's like trivial yeah. issue. Oh, uh, this is like another notion of average case hardness where like you need like you need to know it when you like uh, make a mistake. So uh, here we are consider like a, you can output like you when you make a mistake you can just like output like arbitrary things. But in errorless average case hardness, like you can only output like a single bot, or you have to be you or you have to output the correct answer. And it's an if and only if rather than just an if. Uh, yes, but it's like an under yeah, under okay. conjunction. Yes. Is it the conjecture part of both directions? Um, I think so. Because, well, like, uh, yes. 
So anyway, it's going to be like a, probably not. Probably one direction follows from Raspberry Root. Yes, yeah, one direction follows from Raspberry Root. Yeah. Direction. Well, the other one is now on the first. <laughs> So that has been slipped on your port one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so let, let me quickly sketch like uh, this provides you. So today we're going to show like a uh, harness of KT plus a harness uh, what exists of one function. And let me also mention here that's the other direction uh, in which we show like one function implies, implies harness of KT. Um, it's going to be like the harder direction direction in which like we followed like the nature proof paradigm but we have to go through like a, a new notion of a PRG uh, we call it, like a conditionally secure entropy preserving PRG and uh, um, I'm not going to like talk about it in this talk so uh, let us jump into like uh, our construction so here we want to show that uh, assuming like KC is like mildly hot on average then why functions exist and we know that to deduce one function, it suffices to show like a weak one function exists. And what is a weak one function? I guess like you all know it is kind of like a mildly hard average version of a one function, which we would just like ask for a mild hardness. And by the famous like hardness amplification lemma, we know well if a weak one function exists, then we get a one function. So today we're just going to construct a weak one function. So let us jump uh, into our construction. So, um, so first, bef uh, before I sketch out my construction, I'm going to fix like a universal constant C. So let's see be like a constant such that for any string X, KT of X is like at most a length of X plus C. So as mentioned, just think about like the length of common prints for like Python programs. And now uh, our like a Y function is going to take like a, a random string pi prime, pi prime of length like n plus c, and also like a random index, like think of it as an integer from like one to n plus c, and which takes like a log n plus c bits to encode. So like the first step in our function is to kind of truncate like this very long string pi prime to well, like this first i bit uh, prefix. So we denote like pi f, so basically here is like pi prime and I will only look at like the first one to i bits and we just remove like a, the rest of it. And we're going to interpret like this prefix pi as a program. And we can, we run this program for like t of n steps where like t is my runtime bounds and we let y denote the output of this program pi. And finally, we're going to output like the random index i, like concatenate with a, my output y. And this completes the construction of a, our function f. Okay, so let's just, let us really show that this is really one way, assuming like a harness of kt. So we assume for contradiction, right? So then assume for assume like somebody in, like somebody can invert it with probability like one minus negligible, and we want to kind of construct like an algorithm that computes like kt of x with like a one minus negligible probability, and this is going to be a contradiction. So if we have inverted to one function, like how do we compute like a kt capacity? So uh, our heuristic is like also pretty like straightforward like. A, given me like a string y and my goal here is to compute the kt capacity of y so what do we do like we first like try all possible like i from like one all the way to n plus c so we try like i equals one i equals two so like for each i we basically run the attacker like um, basically we ask the attacker to in invert the image like i concatenate with y and if this attacker succeeds, well, it should give me like a program pi of this i, and such that this pi, after you run it, it will generate like a, my input y. And of course, it doesn't always exist, so we have to check like whether pi indeed like outputs my string y within t of n steps. And finally, I will I will output like the smallest i on which like the above check pass. So, well, this is just like 
So you can just think of like a given like string y, I try like a one with i, two with i, a three with i, until I get like a, a anything like a from the inverter. So let's try to see why this is like a good algorithm for KZ. And uh, intuitively, if this attacker succeeds, say, with probability one, then. Yes. Well, the function is like sample random index, and you truncate according to your like index, and you see like you run this like a program for t of n step, and you output basically the index together with its outputs. So, if you want to compute like KT capacity, just try given like y, just try all possible i and like see when it when it succeeds in inverting this function. And say everybody good. Yeah, the pi it was the pi is like you first invert to get pi prime and i and then yes, yes, yes. Okay, so like intuitively, well, if this attacker succeeds with the probability one, then in some sense, like uh, if i is like too small, there's like a no no program that computes like that can produce like a my string y, and if the index i is like exactly the comorgal capacity of y, then we know there is going to be some program outputting y, and because like my inverter succeeds with very high, like with probability y, and say then we can we should be able to like find this uh, uh, program. Like however. The problem here is really like we don't get like a, a inverter that exists with probability one. And if you look at this, we are actually feeding our inverter A like the wrong distribution. So let us zoom in to like this question. So in the wild function experiment, where like this inverter is guaranteed to work, we know that like I is a random, like a random index from like one to n plus C. And here, y is an output of a random program of length i. However, like in this KT experiment, where we really want to show like a works, this like i is kind of we really want to sh uh, show it works on like the exact like comorbid capacity of y. And what is like more problematic is this like distribution over y. It comes from like a uniform distribution. And like alternatively, if you think about it, it's like if you have like somebody succeeds in like say one function experiments, and if you look at like outputs of random program, then given like a random program, it's like pretty likely that this program is going to be invalid. And it's like possible that well, like my inverter will just succeed on those like invalid programs and I didn't learn anything from out of it. So there's like no reason to believe that if somebody succeeds there, we can just use it like uh, here. Um, but like uh, by using like a counting argument, we can actually show that well, this, this two distribution are actually like not so far away, like in what we call like a relative distance. So let me sketch like a, the proof behind this. So assume for simplicity that this attacker A is like deterministic. If not, you can fix a random tape and it's like a well, approach to deal with this. And let's us consider some string Y on which like H fell. So like in the KT experiments say like my heuristic fails on some string Y. And we know here like Y has probability mass like roughly two to the minus N in like, because like a uniform random string will hit y with probability like two to the minus n. And now let's look at uh, the, what happens to y like in this one function experiment. So we let, we let w equals like equal kt of y. And we observe that for like, for my heuristic edge to fail on y, like uh, my inverter must fail on w concatenated with y. So if my inverter succeeds, then it wants like it will output the correct answer. So it must fail. So 
And if it must spell, then the probability that this like pair W Y will be sampled with in while function uh, experiments with probability well like first we need like a one over n plus c for like a random index i to hit like my uh, kt complexity w and after that we know that y here has there is like a because kt complexity y is just w so there exists some like machine of less w that will output this string y and therefore it has probability mass like and one over n plus c, uh, one over n plus c times two to the minus w in the one function experiment, and well, apparently this probability mass is like at least say one over n times two to the minus n. So let's say if our heuristic edge falls with like some noticeable probability like a one over p, then we know that like our attacker inverted a must also fall with probability well like. Where OP divided by n, which is like a not negligible. But we know like our attack will succeed with like one minus negligible probability. So therefore, like my heuristic will also succeed with one minus negligible probability. And uh, this is like an indeed good attacker, so uh, which is a contradiction. Okay, I'm uh, going to stop here like a bit and uh, any questions to uh, construction and uh, this proof. Do you have like a one line intuition for what is the what is the psi doing for us? Um, uh, what is i doing for us? So you know, yes. What's the problem? What's the problem like this? Why is it not determining the So essentially, so essentially, what are you doing? I'm trying to understand at the high level. You're saying this i is kind of a guess. Yeah. What the Kolmogorov complexity, uh, the T Kolmogorov complexity is. Right. Right. That's, uh, I mean, you know right over, but you yes. want to think of it in a sense. Yeah, you can say, you can think about it as just trying all possible ice. And uh, it's like in the standard way you like kind of, uh, you like reduce like a, uh, some problem of like a some like say like a uh, like max like a max, uh, say like a minimal independent sets to like its decisional version right so you just like you you have like an instance and you just, you just have like those uh, like a kind of like for here it's like an index here and. Uh, no, 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 of course, of course, without the eye, it doesn't make any sense. That's yeah. I, like, uh, I'm trying to understand kind of the high level intuition here, which is that, like, you take this eye, and this eye is supposedly the eye you're interested in is the correct eye that gives you the correct kind of uh, sticking of complexity. And once you hit that, it's what kind of helps you to get the. Back to the normal function. Yes. And essentially, we're we're kind of proving that like a kind of those like a useful like a I together with like program. So basically, those like a KT witness is going to is going to be like dense in my so district. Here, for example, you're looking at a random string and you're looking at the prefix of size i. Just where i is random. Uh, if you change your one function to mean left upper bounded, not fixed length, you have just considered a random string of length up to n. And could you have worked with that? Uh, up to n and uh, up to n. So you have two parts of the input. Yes. Exact length n and i. Yes. This is a prefix. Yes. Overall, it extracts the length i prefix, which is a random bit string. Yeah. So now suppose I design a new one with function. Whose uh, domain is not bit strings of length n, but bit strings of length up to n. Yes. Then you would have generated the exact same set. Uh, yes, I think so. So, uh, what you are constructing then is a one way function of input less than or equal to n to a particular set. But here, yes, like if you switch to yeah. like. Uh, so, it was, it's going to be like. Uh, in some sense, like if you have like a 
of strings to like less up to i, then you need to make sure that like you sample like uh, like you you sample each of the lens like with like equal probability. Because no, I'm not gonna. I'm just saying the illusion for the original one-way function. Can we have replaced it? Can we replace it by one-way function of the input length up to n? Yes, but then for each different input length, you will have like a, say then it's not, no longer like a uniform distribution. So you are going to have like a one over n probability you sample from say random string of n over two, and also one over n probability you sample say say <coughs> random string of less n. So it's like not going to be uniform. So I guess like the best way to describe this distribution is also still like taking i and and do this truncation. But the limiting distance argument should hold. Okay. <laughs> And I do want to mention here that uh, Q is actually like, uh, it's actually not very tight here, right? So if you look at the probability, um, on, on one hand, hand, we have like one over n times like a two to the minus w. And the only thing we want is just like one over n times like two to the n. So there is a gap and uh, this, go, this is going to be helpful like uh, in the second part of uh, this talk. Okay, so uh, let me move on to like uh, summarize a bit of uh, like uh, those exciting results along like uh, the work with like math complexity and crypto. Okay. I think your definition one function need to truncate the pi. Yes. Just take the first i bits, but in your heuristic, when you check, you, you, you are not truncating, you are using the pi. Oh, right. Well, like this pi denotes like a, well, pi after truncating like pi pi. So you do like a, yes, yeah, like Okay, great. I only have like 20 minutes left. So um, let me like go really quickly through like uh, those results. Um, so there was like a question about like sub extra one function. And uh, we actually proved that if you like to get like one sub extra one function, you only need to consider like sub linear average case hardness if you consider like some like a comorbid complexity problem. And we also have like a why functions from like an X complete language. Well, if an X complete language is like average case hard, then we get, it's like a, a hard with, with respect to algorithm that runs in time like a, n to the point one and say. Um, it's like a mildly harder average, like uh, like a yeah, like mildly harder average with respect to algorithms that runs in like sublinear time or like square root n time. And uh, we also get like a one functions from like MP complete language. So if you consider like average case hardness. Sorry, sorry, I'm I'm so confused about this sublinear thing. Yes. So you think of an algorithm, it runs in sublinear time, yeah. it takes as input one bit of the X and it outputs kind of bit by bit. Is that kind of the well, like you, it, it doesn't get like a yeah, it doesn't get like the inputs of the whole instance, but you have to still decide the problem. So it's still that this is like a proof that lower bound that's enough to get one sub expansion one function. Yeah, yeah, this is like a bizarrely weak like a hardness assumption, right? Because you don't get read the whole input. Like, how can you like it? Apparently, it's, it's not hard, like in worst case. So, you have RAM access to the input? Like, when you talk about it, sublinear, what is it? It's actually it's enough to prove with too much in access. But it's a gap version now. It's not the uh, hardness of computing it, it's a hardness of deciding what is big or small. Yes. Can you say more about this design? The from complete language. Uh, the, uh, and we showed like a uh, this like a like a language like a related like it's like a conditional version of a Komoro complexity, and we showed that say uh, it is MP hard, and uh, if you consider like the average case hardness of that language, and then you get like a one function. And it's like a, and it's the average case hardness of that problem like characterizes the existence of one function. So really, uh, to it's also like a necessary and sufficient to kind of show like a worst case to average case reduction to that problem if we want to get like one function strong worst case hardness of MP. But like converting one function to the worst case is also 
and be, and be complete, right? So yes. Yeah. It's kind of a similar connection, well, but to a problem that's like more natural and just say, okay, just take uh, yeah, there's like a much more thing like uh, you can hope for like if you have like a natural problem like um, you can hope for like worst case of average case reduction which like you couldn't for like an arbitrary like a thing and uh, yes there are like a like we believe there's like a really like there are really like benefits you get from being like nature. Can you do this with any sampleable hard distribution for the language, or does it have a specific one? Yeah, this is going to be why I'm going to talk about seeing part two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys, I got uh, running out of time. So, uh, also mentioned this like elegant work by like a uh, Tali and uh, Rahul, like they shows like we can also characterize like S zero one functions using Como complexity. And there's like more results, which, uh, as you can see, I don't have time to go through. Uh, okay, I, okay. Let me try to like wrap up like my part two in fifteen minutes. Like, uh, um, so I'm going to take like a win-win perspective, and to look at like uh, the result we get like uh, from part one. So recall that in part one we showed like one functions is equivalent to KT being like out the Holland average, and there are two interpretations of uh, this result. So first, this proves that uh, when functions exist, if kt is mildly Horner average, so basically says that if we want to deduce one function, great, we can study harness of a uh, kt capacity. And uh, an interpretation two would be like, well, this is a win-win situation. So in a win-win situation, we usually get some like something like either like this primitive is secure, or we get like an algorithmic breakthrough. So here we get like either when functions exist. Or like we obtain an algorithm that uh, computes kt of x, or even it actually finds a kt witness of x, if you recall like the heuristic. So what does it mean? It means by like, well, it's easy to compute kt. So if like finding kt witness is easy, then like obviously we can do like optimal file compression. And here what is more interesting, or well, okay, I'm, be, I'm going to be like a really poetic here and uh, uh, you can do like Occam's razor. And what's the consequence of for Occam's razor? Again, like I'm going to be like really poetic. And so if finding KT witness is easy, then and I claim that well, like science discovery is easy if you believe Occam's razor. So what does Occam's razor say? It says, well, the simplest explanation is going like mostly likely going to be the truest. And uh, well, this is like a arguably like the prevailing like belief in our science community today. And so, if you believe like Occam's razor, simply it's like the best. Then like, yes, we need to assume like nature is like computational bounded. Of course, we do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like uh, it's already like good enough for me to say like we can base my function on like harness of a like classical science discovery. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so you can imagine like well, if we have like a algorithm finding KT witness, like we can just collect like a bunch of data, and uh, we're looking for like a, a, a hypothesis that explains this data. And what is this hypothesis? Well, Occam's razor says it's like the sh like the shortest one. And this is exactly finding like uh, the Komogu capacity of my data. And of course, it's like caveat, caveats, like we need to assume like uh, nature is efficient and we need to assume like collecting data is easy. And however, it is like uh, another important like a uh, missing piece here. Just, just namely, if we look at like our theorem. So what we really get is like, we get like a KT algorithm that works over uniform distributions. So if you plug in like my like poetic like a paradigm, it's going to give like science over uniform random strings, which is like typically not very interesting. Like who cares about like science over uniform strings? So today, like the question in part two is like, can we do better? So can we say, can we make this like over like practical instances? And uh, uh, and our results, like in the second part, 
uh, is, is that basically you can you we are able to achieve this by kind of do like doing science over like uh, efficiently sampled uh, instances and we show that <laughs> okay and we show that well like uh, if we consider like a probabilistic variance of a kt uh, which we call like a pkt and i'm going to introduce this notion well maybe not because i only have like 10 minutes just like now just think of like pkt as like kt and the following are equivalents so first my functions exist and second well there exists like some sample distribution on which like this pkt is mildly hot average and the third our uniform over uniform distribution like this pkt notion is mildly hot average so we basically show like an equivalence of all these three things it's exactly compute there's wow. no approximation wow. right as you can see like it's compute is exactly um, yeah, it's even a search algorithm, right? Because uh, and uh, let me quickly mention like what PKT is. Why well, it's like a recently introduced notion of like a cumulative capacity. Uh, we can think of it as like captures what happens to KT if we get we give like both parts like a we, if we give like both parties a random reference string or like a uniform reference string. So basically, if first there's like a CLS and you can pick your shortest program after seeing CLS. And it's basically the same, if we assume like a standard capacity assumption, it's going to be the same as like KT, but well, of course, within additive factor of all log n, it's going to be the same. And so, um, so let's uh, just pretend like PKT is just same as KT. And uh, so if we look at bullet two and bullet one, well, it's this is yeah, like a strong win win situation, right? Because we say, like, either one function exists, or for like any efficiently sampled string x, we can find like the short problem, like problems that produce x like efficiently. And this allows us like an, in, if, an like, in, uh, efficient approach implementing like all kinds of reasons. This is like what we want in like my. I like poetic description. Yes, when you say we can find probability, does that mean that it doesn't? So it doesn't, but the type probability does. So you don't know what it does. Yes, yes. Like you don't know what it does. Just like it comes up with a program and maybe just think about like chat GPT, right? Like, <laughs> like it finds you something. I don't yeah, just you find something like catch you find something for you, but you have no idea whether <laughs> like it says it's like really competently, right? As if as if it's like a grand truth, but you need to be careful. It's like the same situation here. Yes. Presumably conjecturally, you have also have sub exponentially hard one way functions or you have sublinear-ish algorithms. Um then you're going to uh this is like a, it, is this like a, it's going to give you something weaker, right? It's going to like a sub essential algorithm, like not efficient anymore. So, okay, great. So then that's because like I'm like, I'm kind of hiding from the like PKT from you. Let's let, let me do it like formally so we can show like under standard randomization assumption. Basically, if you replace like PKT by KT, all this like three will still hold. And the function here is like a, the complexity class E doesn't have like an infinite open non deterministic like a sub exercise circuit. And let me mention this is like standard uh, complexity assumption and it implies like MP, uh, AM equals MP, the randomizes like AM to MP. And uh, uh, yes, exactly. So it doesn't really follow from this assumption. But like by going through our proof, we can actually show this like with like exact compute. Like here is like ex exact, like everything is like exact. Okay, because I'm running out of time. So I'm going to skip this probability notion. Just think about it. it's like CRS KT. And uh, also I want to mention here, if we look, just look at like bullet two and bullet three, well, this basically says if PKT is hard under like some sample distribution, then it's hard over uniform distribution. 
or like uh, alternatively, like uniform distribution is the hardest distribution for PKT. Uh, it's, this is like very surprising. Like how can like uniform distribution be like the hardest? And let me mention very quickly here that uh, in Packers and 11 in, in, in 90, like they show that if there's like language in MP, this is going to be like another language L prime, uh, such as L is like hard on average with respect to some distribution, there's like L prime, another language that is hard on average with respect to uniform distribution. And while this is not the same language and L prime you get is like, a, unfortunately not very nature. And uh, our result kind of is like the first like non-algebraic language within MP, such that like a hardness with respect to like any sample implies hardness with respect to uniform. And of course, like you can say like discrete log also satisfies this due to like randomized self-reducibility, but well, such languages are like really rare in within like MP. And uh, I guess I have to mention this like very, really uh, recent elegant work by uh, Rahu uh, I and Rahu S and uh, Han Lin. So they showed that basically uh, like under the randomization assumption, like one function is equivalent to KT being hard to like omega log and approximate with respect to some sample of distribution. So here we only require like hardness of like solving the exact version of KT. And I want to mention here that this is not only like a matter of like approximation gap, this is like significant in the sense that well, if you look at KT, it's going to be easy to omega log and approximate over uniform distribution. So just outputting N. And uh, by going through like their proof, like you show that, well, any distribution that is hard, this distribution is going to be like a one function. So like, unfortunately, like it doesn't tell us much, like if we want to build like a one function from scratch, but uh, like a really like elegant work, which kind of inspires our, our result. So I don't really have time go, going into like proof. So like really high level idea, which we're, we're going to use like the same construction and by observe like a, like this, like, a, like this, like is the fact that it's not tight that I mentioned. And we can actually like show switch to uniform, switch like uniform distribution to like more general distribution and how general it is like, okay, by like a, a by like a result, a recent results on coding theorem, this is going to be like a really general, like any sample distribution. But I, unfortunately, I don't really have like enough time to go through like the proof. But uh, the idea is here, like this is not tight, so you can do something better, and this is really powerful. And it's step two falls from like a, uh, the recent uh, result on coding theorem. So like a summary, like very nice win-win situation and also get first language that means like uniform is like the complete distribution. Okay, let me use like my last two minutes to uh, briefly sketch like uh, the approach towards like excluding passy line. So passy line means like a world of uh, impact L's five worlds uh, in which MP is a hard on average, but there is no one function. So to exclude this world, we need to show like one function but we need to show one function from MP is hard on average. And here's like a, uh, like a, a tentative approach. So if MP is hard on average, then we know like set is hard on average under some distribution. And if we are able to show like PKT is hard on average over some distribution, then we're done because by what we have seen today implies one function. And you probably, you will be like confused, like how does it mean, like what does it mean, like set is hard on average implies like PKT is hard on average. And like a key observation here is that actually you only need to, to show like this, you only need to prove like MP hardness of PKT, which is like a really like a important problem like in matter capacity. Well, the basic idea is like if set is hard on some distribution, you can use reduction to define another distribution over PKT, which is also hard. And uh, arguably this is like, uh, seems to be even necessary, even assuming I O like, uh, uh, see Heiling's talk uh, this yeah, afternoon. <laughs> 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 okay, so, and there's some technicality here, which I don't have time to cover. And, uh, but I also want to mention like this, like a recent result basically showing uh, this like, a, this is not a problem. And so we are getting closer. And uh, 
Uh, no, it suffices, it suffices to like prove empty harness. Like, because uh, if you prove like empty harness, you can use this reduction. Like, say set is hard on average over some distribution. This gives like a distribution on which like set is hard. You just plug in this reduction, and well, like each set formula you get here, you plug in reduction, you get like a PKT instance, and this is going to show like a PKT is also hard on average with under some sampleable distribution. We need a cork reduction, right? Yeah, yeah, we need like a cork reduction. You want arbitrary distribution for Yes. That's an example for conditional Good points. If we can prove it, we would be able to like show this, you know, like if you replace this for conditional cases. Uh, I guess there's still your technicality here, but maybe you can get something close. Yeah. So if we can consider like a conditional version of KT, which like uh, as mentioned, it's already like empty complete, then if we can make like this step work, then it would be great. It's like also another approach towards like excluding Tesla. Uh, how about the difference between KTP star? Well, like a, a very high level is like a meta complex, like different like meta complex problems. So like a, they should like a, intuitively they should be like a really close, but to like actually closing this gap, like it requires like a, a really breakthrough idea. We can see what the MKTP story is. Oh yes, M MKTP story is like, MKTP is like given like a string and you find would want to find like the shortest program that outputs the string. MKTP star, like I give you a string with like some stars like in this string. And if I put a star on some position, this means like, I don't care like what, what you output on this position. And uh, you can also you can you can also define like the shortest program produce like a, a string with star and uh, like should uh, show that if if you consider this version it's going to be like a empty complex. Yes. So yeah. Okay. So it also talks about the two machines on the circuit version. Yeah. Like uh, yeah, he covers like uh, like basically all these notions and. MCSP star to a machine, like they all, like oh, they are all, yeah, they are all like in the star set. So, to run personally, just remove that. Yeah, just need to remove the star. Do you have any solution like one version is using the uniform to the machine and with the input? Here it's just saying, give me one tuning machine. Are they like Actually, very different, or uh, like I don't understand the question. Like, like you're asking with CSP and MKTP. Yeah. That's uh, no, no, like not MCSP. MC is a circuit, and KTP is tuning machine. I'm talking about PKT and MKTP. Yeah, so the KTP. Or MKTP is just asking you to output. At least P is on. I'm like even with that, it would be nice to rule out uh, Tesla and Ibram. You were on their right? Like assuming. Let's assume the organization can you rule out facilities. That's enough for us. That is first thing. Yeah, if you don't like like CRS, if you hate CRS, we can just assume like a organization and it's just not. And probably your know, analysis result probably works for P also, right? Yeah. Uh, that wouldn't be surprising if we can extend and show that MTTP is. Yeah. yeah. The story is the important one. If I use the like. <laughs> If I just use the any assumption, we will have a better one. That's so interesting, right? Any assumption that's not one function. function. Yeah, if you assume one function, then I'll push it. That's a good subject. Okay, I have to wrap up. <laughs> and uh, it's like golden time for crypto and the capacity. And I hope I convince you of this today. And uh, this is like a more exciting connection. Those are like papers like stock this year. And uh, I have to end here. Like, thank you so much for listening. Very interesting talk. We can take further questions offline and later today. Then today we have the talk with Yanni and the Gigi for the reasons. But at the end of today, uh, we will have more talks on crypto and today. Uh, one brief announcement uh, before uh, going to the break. Uh, for those interested in zero knowledge, there is a uh, 5 p.m. Uh, so that all uh, 5 to 8 p.m. There is some uh, zero knowledge event, including work.
workshop and other things. So those interested, uh, maybe you will get an email from the